Right, okay guys, uh, welcome to another one of my videos. Um, this is actually the second time I've made this video. Um, or, you know, I started recording this video about, well, oh, maybe three, four weeks ago. I recorded one part of it. In fact, I recorded the unboxing of this thing. Um, and I was going to get around to uh, doing the second part and I completely forgot. And then, of course, I ended up deleting the part I'd already recorded. I'd taken it off the SD card and it is now gone. But anyway, who cares about bulk unboxings? There are a lot of nonsense as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, this video, I've been asked by quite a few people to make this one. Now, there's a plethora of better videos out there. Um, if you want detailed specs and whatnot about this thing, then go and look elsewhere. You're not going to find that sort of information. Uh, in this video. This is just me giving my thoughts on this thing. So anyway, yeah, the thing in question I don't know if you say it in the screen has just gone blank is the Commodore 64 Mini. In fact, it's not called Archie. Get out of the road. Got a dog going looking for crumbs. Go and lie down. Now stop it. The number of times that dog walks underneath the tripod and bloody kicks it. It's not called the Commodore 64. You'll notice there is no mention of Commodore on this thing at all. It's just called the C64 Mini. Yeah, that's obviously to avoid uh, any sort of, I don't know, copyright claims, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they can get away with making this in without seeing it as the Commodore 64. So anyway, yeah, this is the Commodore. So this is the C64 Mini. As you can see, it is indeed Mini. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've got to say, it, it actually... It does actually feel like the same sort of uh, the same sort of plastic as what the Commodore sixty four was made of. Um, it does feel quite weighty as well, which is good. I mean, I, I don't know what's inside. I'm not going to go open it up. I'm sure there's other videos that will show you inside it. Uh, I'm presuming it's a sort of a I don't know. It's, it's emulation, whatever it is. But first things first. Yeah, you can see there. It's it's a shrunk Commodore 64. Now, I don't know whether these keys are in scale. There's something that's niggling me that tells me these keys look slightly smaller in comparison to the rest of the case. I don't know. I'm maybe talking shite. It's maybe just me. But you can see there, yeah, I mean, they've got the, the beige colour. They've even got the little power light, which unfortunately doesn't... No, it does come on. It does come on. What am I talking about? Um. Yeah, you've got all the keys. What it doesn't have is you used to have the computer generated graphics on the sort of underside of the keys. Now they've not gone into that much detail in this. Um, sadly, the keyboard is for show only. It doesn't work. I mean, it would be absolutely epic if this keyboard worked. I know some people would say, well, it'd be too small, but you know what? I could quite, I've got quite small fingers. I could quite easily use this as a proper keyboard. Um, apparently there is a full size C64 Mini, if, if that's what you want to call it, on its way out. Um, that'll be quite interesting. But yeah, you can see there, I've got all the keys. They've even got the right kind of colour as well, I think. And on the right hand side, you've got all the F keys. Again, did, wait, I'm trying to think, no, did that? Yeah, only, I was going to say, did I have F1 and F2? But no, I think that's exactly what they look like on the real thing. So yeah, purely as a as a a nice little uh, model, it does look the part. It does look really really nice. On the side, as you would expect, there's nothing. On the back, you've got power, which is a micro USB, and you've got HDMI out. And on the right hand side, you've got two USB ports and an on off button. Underneath, I'm presuming that this thing keeps going to sleep. Underneath, uh, I'm guessing that's some kind of coolant. So what does that say? The C64 Mini. Uh, made in China. Yeah. So there's no mention of Commodore. It'd be interesting to see if there's any mention of Commodore in the instructions. I'd be very surprised about this. So that is the actual unit itself. Um, yeah, that is that. Another thing that comes with it, you get an HDMI cable. You also get the mini USB cable thing. I'll put him over there. You can sit there. In the, as Ashens would do, you can sit over there and behave yourself. The other thing that comes with it, I'll just unwind the cable. Jax, stop it. I've got a dog that's absolutely desperate to jump up on top of the settee. 
you get this thing, the joystick. Now, I believe it is resembling, I don't even know what the joystick was called. I've no idea what it was called. It's not a quick shot. I don't know, Power Cruiser? I don't know what it's called. But what separates this one from a normal joystick, you could see, is it's got, well, it's got two buttons. Now, they are both independently, they do different things. You've also got two buttons. You've got one here and one here. And along the bottom, you've got four buttons. Now, as you can imagine, a Commodore 64 required a keyboard. Now, obviously, this keyboard doesn't work. So what they've kind of cleverly done is they've mapped, like some of these buttons bring up the menu, some of them act as, um, what do you call it, like spacebar, run stop, one, two. Basically the, they've tried to kind of map the common buttons that were used in games. Not so much in the games themselves, but it's more in a lot of the games that you have um, I was going to say they were cracked, they required you to press run stop. There again, the games that this come with are not obviously cracked, they're, they're not going to have that, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But the great thing with this is, yeah, it came with uh, 64 pre-recorded games. Now, I've got to say, the games are not bad, there's some cracking games, but there's an awful lot of games I would say, why is that there? You know, why have they included that? But with the recent, I'm saying recent, I don't know when it came out, with the last uh, firmware update, you can add uh, you can add games. What you can do is you can put games on a memory stick and you can plug the memory stick into the Commodore 64 or the C64 Mini. Um, I don't think it's as simple as just, you know, transferring D64 or tap images. I don't think it's that simple, unfortunately. I think you've got to put them into folders. And I think there's a bit of faffing about. Um, but... Thankfully, my mate Chris Panther UK, he very, very kindly uh, gave me a copy of his uh, SD card and I just put it onto the memory stick and it just works. Now, the joystick itself, I've got to say, I'm not, I'm not a fan. I mean, it, you know what, it feels like it could easily break. Now, I've been, I'm a member of the C64 Mini Facebook page. And uh, there's quite a few people complaining about the joystick break. And I mean, you know, it's just, well, obviously it's plastic. But the concern for me if this breaks is if this breaks, then, you know, you still need this. You still need these buttons for this thing to work. So really, you don't want this to break. I do know that you can use some game pads. Uh, I think Chris said you can use the sort of SNES USB pad. The thing is, the thing is for me, um, so that's my, my lizard has just freaked out, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, yeah, the thing is for me, when I play the Commodore 64 or in fact any kind of 8-bit games, computer games, I don't like using a gamepad. I just don't, I don't think the controls, they got, the games on these machines were written for joysticks. So I would always rather play a proper joystick. Now I've got a, it's a US, it's an 8-pin uh, Atari joystick adapter to USB, which allows me to play, you know, use an Atari joystick on a PC. And I was hoping that that would work with this thing. It doesn't, unfortunately. So you are limited as to what uh, joysticks you can use. The other big thing, which is a bit of a pain, is it only supports games that uh, use joystick port number two. You can apparently, I think, if you rename the file of the game that uses joystick one, I think if you put J1 before within the name, then you can do it. So it's there's a bit of faffing going on there. And one thing I, I don't think you can do at the moment is you can't have two joysticks plugged into this thing. Um, you know, obviously you need the you need the USB stick. But I will show you what you can use, which is pretty good. Um so yeah, like I says, it's you know, there's a few things I'm not keen on. I'm not, I'm not keen on this joystick. It does feel like if you put too much pressure, that would just snap off. And like I say, you don't want that to happen. It feels, it does feel pretty flimsy. It's very, very plasticky and not in a good way. It doesn't feel particularly weighty either. I'm not keen on, I mean, because it's quite, it's got quite a stiff shaft. Hey, hey. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I've got quite small hands. When I'm trying to press that and hold it, this part is kind of digging in underneath there, so I'm not, I don't find that particularly easy to use. But you know what, that's what we've got. With any luck, there will be another firmware update which will allow us to plug in other joysticks into this thing. So that is it, you've got the C64 Mini and you've got the joystick. And like I said, you get the HDMI cable and you also get the micro USB. So more importantly, how does it play? Let's take a look. Right, okay, um, that's it plugged in, obviously. You can hear the music. And basically, it boots, uh, it just boots straight into this front end thing. I've not bothered letting you see the cables plugged in. I mean, it's just the, the HDMI adapter plus the, uh, the micro USB. I'm going to reset it. I'm going to get, grab my coffee. So, yeah, this is the front end. And um, you see, it does look really nice. It's HDMI, so, you know, it's. There's no pissing about with tuning a TV, with RF cables and all that bollocks. Now, to use the thing, obviously, you've got the joystick and it is one of these. It's your standard USB. So I'll go ahead and plug it in. Now, I think it's the back one, is it? Or is it the front one? And I've got it wrong. You have to plug it into the front one, like so. So you can see there along the bottom, you've got all the, the games, there's 64 games. So let's just very quickly go through them. Does it loop around? Right, so you've got Euridium, which is a good game. Who dares wins? Now what I do like about it, you can see there, that's annoying me that, that's not, it's a bit squint, but if you're a, a regular to my channel back in the day, you'll know that I'm a frequent, I put squint videos. Just uh, ask Brian. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so we've got Who Dares Wins. Aye, what I was going to say is it tells you a bit about the game. Um, it's, you know, who wrote it. It's got a nice screenshot as well. Who Dares Wins, Winter Games, World Games, Zynaps, Alley Cat. Never a fan of Alley Cat. I always think it looks amazing. But, mm, I don't know. I just, I don't like the game. Anarchy. Never played that one. You published it, Racket. Uh, Armalite is an awesome game. Avenger. Again, Avenger was one of these games I liked it in, in practice, or I liked it in theory, but I never really enjoyed it. It was always too difficult. You can also boot to Commodore 64 Basic if you want, or C64 Basic as it's called. Um, Battle Valley, don't remember that one. Boulder Dash, an absolute Stonewall classic. Bounder, another great game. Cal Excuse me, California games. I had moved on to Atari ST by the time this came out, so I never really played it. Chips Challenge, uh, again, I think that's a bit of a classic. Confusion, love that game. Cosmic Causeway, that's uh, one of Sean Sutherland's games. Really good game by Gremlin Graphics. Creatures, so yeah, another cracking game. Cyberdeen Warrior by Fourth Dimension. I think I played that in a, one of my videos. Then you've got Cybernoid, Cybernoid 2, uh, Deflector, don't remember playing that one. Uh, Everyone's a Wally, another great game. Fire Lord, Gribbley's Day Out, Hawkeye, Heartland. Uh, Hero Botox, never heard of that one. Don't know anything about it. Highway Encounter, I didn't even knew that. Knew, I didn't even know that that was actually in the Commodore 64. Um, I'll just turn this down a wee bit so you can hear me properly. What's this? Uh, Hunter's Moon, again, it's a game I've tried to play and I've never really, really got on with it. Uh, Hysteria, not again, 1987. See, I'd moved away by that point. Impossible Mission, well, it's it's not, it's a game that I'm impressed with, but I don't personally enjoy Impossible Mission. I just find it quite boring, actually. Impossible Mission 2, uh, I.O., I've heard of, but I've never played it. Jumpman Jr., I mean, if you want a, a more pathetic-looking graphically, graphic game, then that is your man, but it's a fantastic game. 
Mega Apocalypse, was it Simon Nickel? Why are you going to even look at that? Simon Nickel wrote that with Rob Hubbard. Mission AD, again, don't remember that one at all. Wanted Monty Mole, Tony Crowder classic. Monty on the run, fantastic. Nebulous, a lovely looking game, but it's insanely difficult. Netherworld, I remember playing that on the 1988, I remember playing that in Atari ST in the Commodore Amiga. Nobby the Aardvark, uh, Nodes of Yesod, Paradroid, another great game. Pit Stop 2 is awesome. Ranarama, I played it on the Atari ST, loved it. Robin of the Wood, I actually completed, one of the few games I ever completed. Rubicon, wow, 1991. That is quite, quite a late game. Maybe give that a wee go in this video. Skate Crazy, School Days, uh, Snare, I don't think I remember that, 1989, no, I was I was on my Commodore Amiga at that point. Speedball, I was I always imagine, I always, if I think he's Speedball, I think of Atari ST. Speedball 2, I think of the Commodore Amiga. Spin Dizzy is an insanely difficult game, but it's a beautiful game. Star Pose, mm, I remember buying that, I thought it was a bit naff. Steel, I've heard of it. Street Sports, Baseball. I don't know why they've got a baseball game on this, because, you know, us Brits didn't really. Oh, well, saying that, I did actually play baseball for my local county and we're actually Scottish champions, so there you go. Summer Games 2, probably the pinnacle in my mind of the Epix games. Super Cycle, another great game. I did buy this, Temple of Apshai. Um, it got really good reviews in Zap and I bought it, it came in two discs I think. RK yes odd. Uh, that's just a kind of thank you. Thing bounces back. Thing in a spring. Thing in the Spring had great music, but I wasn't particularly a big fan of the, the game itself. I thought it was quite dull. Trailblazer, oh, I'm going way too fast here. Trailblazer, yep, Sean Southern, a great game. You can play two players simultaneous. Uchi Mata, I don't know why they've put... I mean, judo is not the the most uh, popular sport in the world, and I don't no disrespect to anybody that does judo. Um, but why have they put a judo game in it and then back to your idea? So there's 64 games... Go to see, that's the first time I've actually gone through and looked at each one individually. And apart from a couple, I would say they're all really good games. So, yeah, they have picked good games, but the piece de resistance of this... In fact, let me just, uh, let me just uh, show you the other features of this thing first before we go and delve deeper. So, to start a game, let's... Uh, let me see, where's, where's Super Pipeline? That's the game we want. Let's get a game that I can kind of play. Right, we'll go for we'll go for Paradroid. So to start it, you just press the big red button, and it loads fairly quick. There you go. I'll turn the volume up a wee bit so you can. Now I don't know how that's looking on the camera. Well, it's looking squint, obviously. So I'm gonna. That's annoying me. Listen, doesn't matter, you're used to squint videos with me. Go to see, this does look really, really nice. Hate the joystick though. Uh, it's got to be this side, isn't it? Come on, bloody hell. Is that a draw? Yeah, it is a draw. Apparently the joystick it does get better with use. Uh, right, let's go for this side. See, I'm trying to tap and it keeps all. Oh. Right, that's it this time. You can hear there the sound. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I couldn't tell the difference. Now what's interesting, and it comes as no surprise, there are people, there are hardware purists who are basically trying to say this is all is shite and it's not as good as a Commodore 64. And all I can say is guys, get over yourself. 
It's all about the games. We don't give a shit whether you think the Commodore 64 real hardware is better than this. You know what? I'm all for this. It's given people who never had a Commodore 64 back in the day, or it's given people who did have a Commodore 64 back in the day, but no longer have one, the chance to revisit their memories, their childhood memories. And who, ca who cares what format it takes, whether it's emulation, whether it's something like this, it's about the games. And like I said, you'll always get these hardware purists who are just, let's be honest, they're just boring farts, people with no lives. So if you're one of them, get over yourself, mate. No, nobody really cares. You know, it doesn't matter whether this is has only been made in the last six months and it's not as good as a Commodore 64. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it certainly plays well. Yeah, the joystick's not the greatest, but there are workarounds and I'm quite sure with a, a firmware update in the future, they'll get around that. So, if you want to come out a game, uh, you press... I'm not even bother showing you what button you press. Ah, right, there you go. If you press... Let me just... The screen in this GoPro keeps switching off. Obviously, it's save battery. If you press... You can see that that's when the game... If you press this button, it brings up... You can either save or load a game you can bring up the virtual keyboard, which if you then press the button, hopefully you can see over there, you've got virtual keys. So you can basically move down and pick what key you want. So it's asking you to press the letter R, then you move to R. Down there, you've obviously got the plus minuses, etc. And then down the bottom, you've got your run, stop, control, home, restore, shift, and then you've so that is that is kind of the workaround because like I said it's, it's a computer and computers need keyboards so I'll come back out of that if I want to change games is it this one I think let's give it a go no it's not no it's not is it this one up here maybe how do I change games ah wait a minute <laughs> ah, sorry, right, you press that and you go to exit game and then you press the big button and it takes you straight back to this. So you can move along, let's give Pit Stop a go. I'm not going to let you see loads of games, you know, you know what it's like, you know, you can see here. Right, now it's asking me to key in a name, so what I'll let you do is jump to the virtual keyboard and it lets you see just how kind of usable it is. Like so. So I can go like that. Uh, and then it's enter. It's that button here, is it? Oh, that's space. How do I press enter? Oh, it's this one. Right, there we go. Pressure button. Oh, I need to hide the... There we go. Now, I've got to say, that sounds pretty much like I remember it back in the day. Pretty much... Ugh, there's a bit of corruption going on there. I assume that was in the real game, I don't know. So, let's, what I'm going to do, just to let you hear the sound better, I'm going to go for my favourite Commodore 64, Sid Tune, bar none. Oops, a daisy. I'll show you the other features of this in one second, I just want to let you... Come on, where is it? Monty on the run. Here we go. I'll just be quiet for a couple of minutes. And I'll wait here just how good it is.
Yeah, that sounds pretty damn spot on to me. Now, I could let you listen to the whole Sid tune because it is ace, but I'm not going to because there's a few other things I want to do. So, I'll come out of this, go to exit game. Now, one of the other features you can do, if you go down to the bottom, you still see that? Yeah, if you move down to this, which is like the screen, and press the button, you can pick different kind of graphical looks. Really annoying me that is so squint. <laughs> it need to be like that. That's what it needs to be. I'm not going to hold it. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, yeah. I've got it set to European 4x3 CRT. Now you can go to Pixel Perfect, which gives a kind of pixel perfect look. Uh, you've got European 4x3, North American 4x3. North American 4x3 CRT, Pixel Perfect CRT. I don't really understand all the different modes. I'm a bit of a numbskull, so I have to stick to European 4x3 CRT because I think that's what kind of I had on my Commodore 64. So you can change that. You've got, what is this? Yeah, languages. It's obviously English for me. Or Scottish. I don't know if Scottish. You can go into this, which. Uh, yeah, you can uh, set what USB keyboard you want to use. You've got legal notices, system information. There you go, it's telling me the firmware was the 10th of November. And you can do a factory reset. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take this off actually. I can hold it myself. Um, Turn the sound down a wee bit. Here we go. Right. Okay, so here is the, the beast. It's not the cables aren't particularly long, so it's kind of hanging down. So there you can see there I've got the USB, I've got the, so the joystick plugged in to port number one, I think it is. And then in the back there you've got the HDMI and mini. Now what you can do is I use one of these things because you've only got two USB adapters you can actually use a multi USB adapter now I use one of these which da -da -da, this was bought for me by a friend a few years ago it's <laughs> you know what I could nah, nah I wouldn't be that cruel I could technically say that I've been given a preview by Sega of the, the Mega Drive Mini because this is exactly what it would look like <laughs> but unfortunately this is just a USB you can see there it's got the four ports but yeah it does look this is exactly what the Mega Drive Mini is going to look like if it ever comes out so basically plugged in here put the screen back on again plugged in here is a USB stick RAM chock full of games what my uh, mate Chris gave me very kindly gave me so what I can do I can plug, I'll just put this over here, I can plug that whoa, in like so. And if you look at the screen, ding! Did you see this up here? This is showing you that there's a USB stick plugged in. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother, uh, I'm not gonna bother put, you know, putting this thing back in the, on the tripod because I just want to let you see it. So now if I come down, well I'm already there, you can see the cursor. If I move across to that and press the fire button, you'll see there it's now looking at the contents of the USB stick. So I can go put the screen on, I can press C64 discs and there we go, I've got all the different things. So let's go for, let's go for drop zone. Press the fire button, there you go. These are all individual directories. So you can see there, there's 10, 10 pages just for 
the letter D. Now, like I say, some of these games use the joystick port number one, so you can't really use that unless you want your rename files, but I'm not going to piss about with that. Can anybody see Drop Zone? Uh, ah, there's Drop Zone there, you see it? Let's move up and see how it works. Press the fire button, Drop Zone. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm obviously trying to play this one handed because I'm holding this GoPro with the other hand. So yeah, really good. So to come out, press the button again and go along to exit game and stab the fire button. So again, if I come down to this. Now I know I've seen a few videos of people actually getting these extra games to be added along the bottom. So you've got box art now. I don't know how to do that. I've not gone into it that deeply yet. Um, maybe if my mate Chris, wink wink, manages to do it, he'll very kindly give me a, a copy of the uh, of the image. So again, in the USB stick, press the button. Now you can just press to the left and it takes you, takes you back out. So there's other letters. If I want to come out of discs, I can go into programs so again. I don't know what the difference. So these are there's Daily Thomas's decathlon. I think man, it's, I don't think it really speeds up the loading of these images. go right we're not going to wait in it load so let's come back out again now one thing another thing that this does not support is a uh, multi-disc games I think you can but you've got to fuck about with it quite a lot and I've not tried it but through the wonders of clever guys so let's go back to the USB stick let's come out come out come out you've got tapes so let's see um, Let's go for, let's go for a year Kung Fu, see if that's there. Oh, bollocks, I've just come right out. Tapes. Year Kung Fu. Now you'll see here, if you want to go old school, this is what, I'm now using my other arm to support my elbow. Remove printer and disk drives. Oh, wait, is this a, no, this isn't a disk, this is a tape, it's supposed to be. I don't know if that's telling me that it's not working. Oh, here we go. So if you want to go all old school, you can load the tape in. For the C64 guy, and you're watching this, and you don't get a tear in your eye, then there is something wrong with you. So yeah, this is loading in real tape time, so it'll take a few minutes to load. So yeah, you've got tapes, let's come out with that again, go back to exit game. Now the clever thing I like about this, most of all, again if you go back to your USB stick, jump back in, left, 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 you've got cartridges. So this thing does support cartridges. Now, what's really, really good is some clever people have actually made compilation cartridges. So for example, Epix games. These are all in one cartridge. And of course they load really quick because they're in cartridge. Now it's wanting me to press F1 for summer games. So again, if I bring up the bring up the virtual keyboard dunk, and then I come all the way down and if I'll go for summer games too 
with F2, like so. Press the fire button. Do you want to read the docs? Mm, you got to know. Come on. Yeah, it's not ideal trying to do this one handed. And then hide. There we go. See how clear that is. I mean, that's almost a zoom really close in the TV. That's pretty epic looking. Oh, pretty epic looking. Hey! So, yeah, that's the cartridges, and it also supports stuff like whoops, it also supports the new games like uh, Commando Arcade. So, if we go back and then we go up to Come along to Commando. Now you may remember this one, that was the new version of Commando that was released. They also released a Ghost and Goblins as well. But I'm sorry, I cannot tell the difference between this and a real C64 as far as the emulation goes. If it is emulation, which I'm sure it is, it is spawn. How cool is that? It just gives you a good idea of just how good that looks. I can give a new channel. So let's start. It gives you various options. Dedicated to Mario, whoever he might be. There we go. Yay! That is super cool. I like that. I'm not even attempt to shoot because I can't because I'm playing it one handed. See how far I can get without shooting anybody. No, 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 no. <laughs> So yeah, that is cartridges, and the last thing which is really really good on this kind of USB stick thing. Then back down to that, and then left, left, left to take us out of cartridges. You've got freeze multi discs. Now these are really clever. So for example, if you go to Elite Systems and press the fire button. It loads this image thing and you can see there you've got all the elite games which is just really 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 clever if you use the joystick to come down space area now like I says not all these games work because obviously they're not technically designed to work in this system, but I've come across very, very few, if any, that don't work. Now this is one that you press a button, I'm not sure what button it is. Don't know. It might be joystick 2 or something, I don't know. But anyway, listen, the very, very last thing I want to show you is, let's, hopefully this will work. I'll just come out. In fact, let me, uh, I'll test it just now actually. You can plug a USB, joy uh, not joystick, a USB keyboard into this. So what I'm going to do, I have got, I've got my keyboard and I've got one of these little dongle things. So I'm going to plug that into this and see if it works. It may not work because it's not, I don't know, does it need drivers or something? Get in! I know this definitely works fine with a normal, uh... right, that is now plugged in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit the virtual joystick and I'm going to try and press Wait a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this and 
I'm going to go to the C64 basic. But I do know it works 100% with a USB wired keyboard. Almost, I'm using this. I'm using this wireless one. It may not work with that. It may require a driver to be installed or something. Yeah, that's possible. Tell you what, I wonder what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this little adapter, the, the hub, and I'm going to plug this little thing straight into that. Let's see if that does anything. Like so. Nah, that doesn't. It might be that the other ones do work. Um, I don't know. But anyway, listen guys, I think I've kind of said everything I want to say about it. But just to recap, in fact, I'll just I'll unplug this little thing just now. Hang on. Here you come, here you come. Yeah. The C64 Mini. Um, what did I make of it? Now, I was very, very hesitant initially about getting one of these. I, th I didn't see the point of it. I thought, I've got my own one. I was a bit like these real hardware snobs. I wasn't a snob. I just personally I didn't see the point of me buying one. But when it came down in price, Chris kept saying to me just how good a little thing it is. And I've got to say, it is really good. It's not, I'm not going to say it's not as good. I would say it's probably just as good as a real C64. The one big thing which isn't as good as a real C64 is the lack of a proper keyboard. Obviously, you know, you can, work, you can get a workaround. You can plug in a USB uh, keyboard into it and it'll work just like a Commodore 64. Um, it's never going to be as good as the real thing, obviously at all, you know, but as far as as far as far it goes with playing games, with, you know, how well it emulates, the sound, the music, how it controls, how it looks, it is up there. Yeah, some games don't really look, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I think a C64 is always going to look better on a CRT, television because it was it, games were designed that's what we remember now we're, we're playing it on a, a high resolution tv 42 inch telly you know as opposed to a 14 inch black and white crt so it's it looks it does look different but the games really come to life you know they really explode out the screen because the, the colors are really vibrant uh, yeah plenty of browns i know um the colors are really vibrant and, but the best of all for me is it's so easy to set up. You just plug it into the back of your TV and away you go. Um, would I recommend you buy one if you've already got a Commodore 64? Maybe not. I've, I've got a Commodore 64 and I'm happy I've bought it. Um, if you've got a C64 wired up in, you know, in your bedroom, your dining room, wherever, then, you know, and you can use it, then I would maybe say, well, no, don't bother because this just does what your Commodore 64 already does. But if you don't have a real C64 and you're currently just using emulators, which technically I know this is probably an emulator, um, you don't have a real C64, then I would say go out and buy one. You get it for about 50 quid. You'll have a lot of fun. Um, and I'm sure with more, um, there's going to be more like future updates for the firmware. I think this thing is only going to keep getting better and better. Um, but you can see there, I've just given you a very, very brief glimpse of just what you can do with it. Um, it's a wonderful bit of kit. Um, I'm not a big fan of these mini systems, you know, you've got your PlayStation and that kind of stuff. But I've got to say, I think the C64 one is excellent. So if, you're, if you've got any interest in revisiting your past as a kid on your C64, go and check it out. So anyway, guys, I am going to get going now and get this video uploading for your... Uh, delectation okay as always guys thank you very very much for watching